Welcome to the Neighborhood Church. So good to have you with us today here for our service online. We're glad you've chosen to join us. In a moment, you're going to see a link for the Connect card. I encourage you just to fill that out. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, please let us know. We'd love to catch up with you. In a moment, we're going to head into the auditorium. The worship is in progress. And I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. And man's empty place and treasures of faith.
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that again.
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, we commit shame, the Savior's love.
Hey, everybody. I'm Jordan, joined by Ashley. Hello. We've got some family news for you. We're going to go through some of the things that are happening here at the Neighborhood Church. First things first, youth next Friday, November 29th. Youth is happening at Apex Trampoline. It's going to be a ton of fun. If you want to attend youth next Friday, it's going to start at 7 p.m. and it'll be done by 9. Talk to Pastor Ethan. You can email him, ethan at neighborhoodchurch.org. He'll give you more info on that, but it's going to be a good time. You should be up for that. Sister Life Christmas Party. It is happening soon. And by soon, I mean Monday, November 25th. That's this Monday at 6.30 p.m. at the Saskatoon venue in the auditorium. There's still time to register. You can register by going through the QR code, which will bring you to a form. And there'll be details on how to pay. It's only $5. And that $5, if you have kids, there's childcare provided. That $5 goes towards that. It goes towards the desserts we'll be having. It goes towards some games, everything like that. And we have an amazing speaker, Jenny Halbawax. So excited for that. It's going to be happening this Monday. So make sure you register and invite some friends to come out too. Awesome. I think we're sticking with a theme here with Christmas stuff. Our kids Christmas program is also coming up here at the Neighborhood Church. That's happening Saturday, December 14th at 6 p.m. at our Saskatoon Saturday venue. It's only happening that evening, so make sure you come out for that to support our kids. All our venue kids will be involved in this program, and after the program, there'll be some food and hot drinks and stuff in the lobby. So make sure to come out, hang out, and uh, let's celebrate the work that our kids are doing to put on a great production for us for Christmas. The Christmas Missions Fundraiser is happening right away. And this is a Christmas goodie platter fundraiser. They're going to be for sale on December 14th and 15th, as well as 21st and 22nd. But in order for this to happen, we need volunteers and we need volunteers to bake and donate cookies, squares, tarts, anything like that. You don't have to put them on platters. You just need to bring them to the church at the Saskatoon venue. And when you're dropping them off, we ask them to be dropped off by December 13th or December 20th, so we can buy your wonderful goodies and support missions that weekend. Blue Christmas is happening Thursday, December 19th, uh, one hour service from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, maybe this year's been a tough year for you. Maybe it's been a year of loss, um, and maybe the holidays are a time that have been a little bit more difficult for you. We want to just come alongside you and provide just an opportunity for you to come, hear the scriptures, join a song, and just be with others who maybe are experiencing a similar time this holiday season. So just keep that date on the calendar, Thursday, December 19th, 7 to 8 p.m. here at the Saskatoon venue. Uh, Blue Christmas service will be happening. Christmas Eve service is on December 24th at 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at both of our venues. So at the Warman venue, there'll be a Christmas Eve candlelight service happening as well at the Saskatoon venue at 6.30 at both venues. We have special music happening. It's going to be a beautiful time. It's one of my favorite services. I love seeing all the candles lit and I just love coming together as a community to celebrate the season. So again, invite some friends and come to one of our Christmas Eve services on December 24th at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, I hope to have you there. At this time, it is now time to introduce our speaker, my esteemed leader and Pastor Ethan's best friend, I best think. Best friend, total yeah. best friend. Why don't you give it up for Pastor Louie as he comes and shares today. Woohoo! Fathers, we look to your word. May it truly become alive in our lives. More than just words written on a page, but truths that are actually embedded in the very being and DNA of who we are. May we be the walking, talking, breathing word of God. May your word, which is alive, be truly alive in us. And at this season, may we be mindful that we are the tangible presence of Jesus, his hands, his feet, to the world that he's placed us in in 2024. And that we as individuals and as the gathered corporate body are the temple of the spirit of God on earth. And where the spirit of God is, Miraculous things happen. People's lives are touched and transformed. Broken things are healed. Hurting things find, find peace. And so, Lord, today as we gather, may that be true for us. And as we leave this place, taking your spirit with us, may those things be true as we enter into people's lives through this season. And we pray in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. And so last week we talked about purpose. We talked about the idea that we need to remember that it's God, God himself, who gives our life uh, purpose. And then I challenged us, and I challenged myself as well, with some choices to make. Uh, to choose to be more concerned with living for God and living out God's purpose than with the, what uh, the popularity of other uh, people may think of us. 
to choose to live out God's purposes because when we live out the purposes of God, it helps to diminish the distractions around us. There we go. Choose to uh, pursue God's purposes uh, because it helps us when we're pursuing the purposes of God to push through the pain that life throws at us and to choose to live out God's purpose in our life because when we do, we experience his empowerment. So last week we talked about purpose. This week we're going to talk about pain. <laughs> and all of God's people said, woohoo, praise Jesus, right? Uh... Uh, Jesus said these words in John 16, 33. He says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Other translations say uh, pain or tribulation or great suffering. You will have these situations in earth while you're here. But he says, take heart because I have overcome the world. He tells us, his followers, there's going to be trials, there's going to be discomfort, there's going to be sorrows, there's going to be tribulations, there's going to be situations in our life that are not that comfortable. So the message uh, for this evening is entitled, Choose Your Pain. Choose your pain. You're going to have pain in life. There's going to be trials and sorrows and difficulties. But uh, our God has given us the power of choice. Now, some of the pain that comes across our path, some of the pain in our life, it is beyond our control. Sometimes, maybe uh, often, some of the pain that we will experience as we journey through life is outside of our control because we, we live in a fallen and broken world. And as we live and journey through this broken land, Uh, sometimes something happens and all of a sudden we find ourselves in this crazy kind of like a freak accident or or, or somebody that you love betrays you and and breaks your heart or the governing bodies impose some kind of thing on on, on the culture and you find yourself that your job is no longer valid or you get laid off. Sometimes for some of us, for some people, somebody else's sinful choice in life causes incredible pain in in their life. If you're here and you've experienced and you're experiencing maybe even lifelong pain because of somebody else's sinful choices, I want you to know that that, that we're here for you. Uh, We love you. God loves you despite the situation that you may find yourself in. I need you to know God loves you and and there's a people who want to journey with you uh, as you process and, and go through life and as you work towards healing. There is a lot of pain that is outside of our control. However, there's also a lot of pain that's within our control. And that's specifically the pain that we're going to talk about tonight. There's a lot of pain that is within our control. In other words, you get to choose your pain. You get the choice between one type of pain or or another. For those of us who are uh, younger or are kids, they get to choose the uh, option of obeying their parents or suffering the consequences later, right? They get to choose their their pain. For many of us, we get to choose whether we're going to live within our means financially today or uh, or if we're not, we get to choose to deal with uh, the pain of debt that might just feel like it's suffocating us uh, later on. For those who are in school, whether it's uh, high school or post-secondary, you can choose to study for the exam or you can choose to take the whole class over again, right? You're kind of getting to choose your pain. Do you want to go through the discomfort now, usually only for a temporary time, or do you want to choose to put off that discomfort in the moment and go through that discomfort uh, again and probably even in a greater way? You get to choose your pain. You get to choose your pain. You can choose to say no to the temptations of sin that that are pleasurable in the moment. You can choose the the, the pain of saying, "Ah, I'm not going to do that thing, even though it's going to feel really good in the short term. I'm going to choose that discomfort. Or I can say yes to the sin in this moment, and I get to choose the pain of the consequence of that sin past that. 
Sometimes it bears itself out in addiction or a broken relationship. You have to rebuild trust because you, you, you chose you chose your pain. Pain is coming one way or another, but God gave us the power of choice in some of these situations. So I want to encourage us to choose the pain of discipline over the pain of regret. There's going to be different seasons and moments and experiences in your life that come your way and come my way, and we get to choose. And I pray that for most of us, many of us, maybe all of us, that we would choose the pain of discipline because it, it's hard. It takes effort and energy, and it, it's difficult, but we need to choose that pain of, of discipline because if we don't choose it, often we're going to end up finding ourselves choosing the pain of regret. Have you ever thought back and said, oh, I wish I would have stuck with blank, or I wish I would have carried on with that, and now I'm, now I'm in this other situation? In discipline, for simple terms tonight, we're going to talk about defining discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. What you want now versus what you want most. Paul, in the book of Romans, writes this, chapter 7 going into chapter 8. Paul says, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But but if I know that that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that that I agree that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It's the sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but but I don't. I want to do, I don't want to do what is wrong, but, but 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 I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It's the sin living in me that does it. I've discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there's this other power within me that's at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that's still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Words of encouragement by Paul. But then Paul carries on. He says, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Oh, thank God. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. We no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead we follow the spirit. Thus is the reading of God's word. Amen. Discipline is choosing between what you want right now and what you actually want most. Paul kind of sounds like a crazy man in this passage for a while, right? He kind of makes it sound like a moment like there's no hope. I can't do it. I want to do what's right, but then I don't do what's right. I I don't want to do what's wrong, but I do what's wrong. Ah, who can help me? Then all of a sudden he says, thank God. Thank God. I can't get it right on my own, but I don't have to get it right on my own. Jesus came, and the Spirit now lives and dwells in with me. The answer is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus made a way, and because the Spirit of God dwells in me, I don't have to do it on my own. Thank God. 
thank God the answer isn't just me gritting and bearing it and trying to be better, burdened by the, the weight of sin. Thank God it's not just me trying to find more self-control and being able to be stronger. The answer is Jesus Christ, my Lord. That's the key. Over time, if it's on our own, we're prone to do the wrong things. If it's all in my own power and strength and by my own nature, over time, I'm prone to choose death. I'm prone to choose sin. I'm prone to choose the things I don't even want to do because for some reason I can't get over just wanting what I want right now instead of allowing the Spirit of God to to move and put myself in a place for what I really want most. But with the help of Christ and with the Spirit of God in me, I can choose the pain of discipline over the pain of regret. It it, it takes hard work, effort, and pain to be disciplined. Yes? But it also is very painful when you go down paths that lead to death and destruction. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. Run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an... We do it for an eternal prize. Oh Lord, help remind me that because your spirit dwells in me and because Christ gave his life on the cross, I don't have to try to bear it on my own. I can do it with your power. But what I'm disciplining my life for is not just something that's fleeting, but is something that is eternal. And oh my, help me to discipline myself. We run with purpose and intention. We run with with focus. We run to win. Because if you don't run to win this race where there's an eternal consequence, you really don't want to lose a race that has an eternal consequence. So choose your pain. Choose the, the pain of discipline over the pain of regret. And this idea of discipline is choosing between what you want now versus what you want most. So the question must be, what do you want most? Have we stopped and thought about this? What what do you actually want most? Because if you don't think about it, and you don't start to allow God's Spirit to move through you and help you to to step into these areas of discipline and, and to train your body, as Paul says, to train yourself to do what it ought to do, what, what, am I, what am I making the choice to choose the pain of discipline for? What is it that I want most? Do I want eternity? Do I want relationship? Do, do I want to be known? Do I, do I want to know the creator? What, what is it that I want most? And then what do you need to choose now to achieve what you want most? Pain is coming one way or another. So which pain, what discomfort are you going to choose today so that you can actually lay hold of what you want most tomorrow? Paul says, so I run with purpose. I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Not just what I want in the moment, not just giving in to whatever it is I want at this moment, but I train my body, I train my mind, I train my, I train every part of my entire being to do what I should do, not just to give in to what is easy in the immediate, because by giving in to the easy in the immediate, I'm choosing likely pain in the long run. So what do you want most? What do you want most? Invite God into your situation and into your answer. God, God, what is it that you want 
me to, to discipline myself in because even though it's going to be difficult in the moment, I trust that you have a grand plan, a purpose, like we talked about last week, for my life that you actually want me to prepare for today so I don't miss out on the opportunity of you moving in my life tomorrow. God, what is it? What do I need to do differently today? A number of different things we could talk about as we talk about choosing and choosing uh, the pain of discipline versus allowing ourselves into the pain of regret. A couple just quick highlight thoughts. Pressing the wrong button. Choose to gather as a community. I'm talking to the group that uh, pushed past the blizzard, amen? Hebrews says, let us consider how to inspire each other to greater love and to righteous deeds, not forgetting to gather as a community as some have forgotten, but encouraging each other, especially as the day of his return approaches. Let's not neglect meeting together. We are designed to live life and do life connected and in community. And that is ever, ever so seemingly difficult in our present age. In the new year, we're going to do a sermon series called Not Alone. Because we were designed to be connected. We were designed to journey through life together. We're not designed to be isolated islands. And the reality is, as you commit to journeying with and living and being a part of community, people are going to irritate you. But don't worry, you're going to irritate people too. (laughs) It's just the reality. But we're still called to, to continue to engage in and build community and to live our lives connected with others. And so we get to choose our pain. Oh, if I go to that event... There's going to be those people, there's going to be that one person, and that's going to irritate me. But but I'm going to choose the pain of discipline. I'm going to choose to continue to meet together. I'm going to choose to put myself in that situation where that person might just irritate me, but I might just irritate somebody else. But, But in that, there's this momentary pain, but as we actually begin to live out what it is to be the body of Christ, the the family of God, We're not going to be years down the road living with the pain of regret, not having created real, real friendships. Closely linked to that is choose to do life together. There's too many one another's in Scripture. But bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. It's going to be painful. It's going to be irritating to help someone bear their burden. And yet Christ commands us to it. And I believe he knows better than I do. And for some of us, we actually need to humble ourselves and not only go and help someone bear their burdens, but I need to humble myself and let someone else come and help me bear mine. Because sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at helping other people, but I don't really want you that involved in my... I'm, I'm, I'm okay on my own. I'll make it. But we need to choose to do life together or we're missing out. We've got so many people who are hurting and anxious and struggling in our world because they haven't chosen the pain of doing life together and bearing a burden and having others bear their burdens and living life connected in community. Choose to forgive. Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. We're the forgiven who forgive, not the offended who reoffend. right? It's difficult to forgive. There's, there's, there, there, there's a difficulty there. There's also a pain in not forgiving. 
choose to study and submit to God's word. There's an irritant. There's a pain. You've got to take time out of your day. You've got to struggle. Some, ah, pastor, I'm not a reader. Pastor, ah, I have trouble remembering. There's a difficulty. But if you don't choose to do it, there's going to be another pain on the other end of it. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. You know what that scripture tells me? It tells me you're wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're, and so am I'm wrong. There's aspects of what I'm believing and what I'm living that are, that are wrong. All scripture is inspired by God is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is. I'm not supposed to come to the scripture and say, oh, you know what? I'm finally justified in what I believe. I look to the scripture to find out where I am. Oh God, there's areas in my life that I'm still blind, that, that, that I'm still hurt, that, that, I, that I've let the culture convince me of something, that, that I've given in to a, to, to a kind of a, a thought in our day. That, but God... I actually need to look to your word to realize where I am. I'm wrong. And if I don't look to your word, I'm probably just going to strut around thinking, oh, thankfully I have the perfect theology. Thankfully I know the perfect interpretation. Thankfully I'm not like... I go to the scripture to find out where I am wrong. And I allow it to correct me and teach me what is no longer wrong but right. The worship team can come back up. Choose your pain. You can choose the pain of studying and memorizing and, and allowing God's word to show us where we are wrong and, and choosing the pain of, of allowing it to teach us where to shift from where we're wrong to become uh, to what is right. Or we can choose the pain of not and just continuing on in certain amounts of, of ignorance and in certain amounts of, of being wrong and, and certain amounts of continually choosing sin and again and again and again because we haven't allowed God's word to reveal to us where we're wrong. And we were convinced that our way is Right. Choose tithing, giving, sacrifice. We'll sk- and then choose to function in the spirit. Choose to function in the spirit, in the gifts and beyond. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. It says a spiritual gift is given to who? A spiritual gift is given to the, uh, the loud guy who yells at us from the front. A spiritual gift is given to who? Each of us. That includes me, but that also includes every one of you. A spiritual gift is, is to each one of us, and it's given so that I can just show off to everybody and look at how spiritual and how special and how blessed I am. Oh, stink, see, I was wrong again. That's why I need to go to God's word so that it shows me where I'm wrong. A spiritual gift is given to each one of us so we can so we can help each other. So you can, you can help me and I can help you and you can help her and he can help him and so we can help each other. But God, I just I, I like it when you just you just give me this spiritual blessing and I just sit back and I just soak it all in and, and it just becomes all kind of about me. I can choose that. But that's probably choosing a pain of regret later on. Or I can choose the difficulty in the moment and say, God, I, I don't know what is going to go on in this situation, but I believe you've called me to it. I'm going to step out and I'm going to trust that you're going to gift me and I'm going to get involved in somebody's life, and I'm going to allow your spirit to, to move through me because I'm here to be your vessel of your spirit's moving, and I want to see other people touched and experience your hope, your healing, your forgiveness, your wholeness. Choose your pain. God gave us the privilege of choosing our pain. 
And I pray we each choose the pain of discipline over the pain of regret. <laughs> the pain of discipline is still a pain. It's still difficult, hard work, irritating at times. But it leads to full, abundant, satisfying, rich, eternal life. Or we can choose our pain and ignore the pain of discipline in the moment. And we find out that we decide, you know what? I'm not going to train. I'm not even going to run the race. And the pain of regret of realizing you didn't get to a place where you get to experience all that God has for you. Let's bow together in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you gave us the opportunity to choose our pain. And I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to be the answer and you put the spirit within us so that we don't have to do it alone. Life is going to be difficult. There's moments of trials and tribulations and difficulties. But we're not stuck gritting and bearing it, trying to do it in our own strength. We're not stuck doing it alone. You are with us. Jesus was sent and died so that our penalty could be paid and the Spirit of God could come and empower us and help us. We're no longer slaves to sin. We have the power to, to choose the righteousness of God. We have the power to choose your will and your ways. We have the power to choose the pain of discipline to experience your blessing in our lives. So Lord God, I pray that we remember that you're the one who gives our life purpose. And I pray that we remember that if we choose the pain of discipline, we won't need to experience, we won't experience the pain of regret, but rather we'll experience the full, abundant, rich, satisfying life that you desire for each and every one of us. Spirit of the living God, speak to each one of us today. Point out to each one of us what it is that we really want and Spirit, in those moments where the thing that we want immediately, the thing that we want right now is in front of us, may we look to you and may your Spirit move within us and may we choose discipline and choose what we want most. And may we experience all that you have for us as we choose not to give in to the momentary pleasure, but choose to experience the fullness that you have. We pray in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. sing one last song together as a declaration today. You can stand, you can sit, you can do whatever you feel is comfortable, but let's, let's declare Christ as our foundation today. Christ is my firm foundation and the rock on which I stand
Thanks for joining us today for our service here at the Neighborhood Church Online. I hope it was a meaningful time for you. As one thing we always say at the end of each service at the Neighborhood Church, we always say we've had church. Now the importance of starts. Let's go be the church. So God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.